Okay, guys, thanks for joining me so much, uh, Randy and Rob. I just finished watching Infrared. Um, this is the second time we're starting this recording because I forgot the name of the movie about <laughs> two minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, we're here to, you know, ask these guys, learn a little bit about uh, this movie they made, um, this found footage film, and just kind of see see their their take on it. So my first question is, how did the two of you end up working together? Because obviously you're co-directors on this. What what brought that you guys to that line? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, obviously I'm not American and Randy's not American um, and we met in America. Um, so uh, Randy, actually I, I met with Randy through a friend of mine because they were putting together a film podcast mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, let's meet with Rob and see if uh, he'd be a good fit for the podcast. Um, I wasn't, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it, um, but then uh, like we stayed in touch and later on, like both Randy and myself worked for a place called Futures Explored, which is a film school and studio for adults with developmental disabilities. Um, so I'm a coordinator there, Randy's head of production. And so we, we get a lot of time just talking about movies and, and, and we already worked together kind of in that field. Um, and we'd spoken a lot about getting a movie made. Um, so we'd, I think when COVID hit, we we kind of really made it happen, and we did another film called The Other Girl, and it led to led to us eventually doing Infrared. Oh, huh. okay. Well, that's interesting. So this would be your third film that you did together. You said second. The oh, okay. Second. Yes. So, yeah. so we did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, how long have you been working on the Infrared? Did you guys write the Infrared script? So we didn't write a script. We wrote an outline uh, for the story. So uh, when, when me and Rob make films, uh, it's usually improvised. So we have a outline of the story. So each scene, what's going to happen? And we let the actors uh, improvise the dialogue. But each, each scene, we know where it's going to go. And the final started Because we started writing this one in, I think it was December, December 2020. Yes. Yeah. And, and then I think we wrapped up writing it in... January and we were shooting by April. Nice. Okay. So I, I know it feels like 2020 has been forever, but uh, now that it's 2022, um, can you remind me what the date is that this movie is out or came out? Because I know we've rescheduled this interview like 12 times. <laughs> uh, so the film comes out July 22nd. Okay. I thought it was coming up in July. I just wanted yep. to just make sure. Okay. It's, it's so. had some um, like private screenings with Q and A's and stuff, but yeah, so it, it's not, it hits streaming for like video on demand on the 22nd and then it goes to AVOD with Terra Films and um, Kings of Horror straight after that. So. So when you guys initially put the outline together, did you guys have the, the whole plan? Was it initially your first idea to be a found footage film? Well, well, because it's not only a found footage film, but it's also a character story. It really focuses on Wes. So I'm curious if you guys uh, kind of built that idea up from the story of Wes and his sister or from the fact of it being a found footage film? I think both of them came at the same time. We, we wanted to do a found footage film and we found the, because we've worked with Jesse and Leah before and we really like working with them. They have great chemistry. They're actually a couple in real life. So it's weird to see them play brother and sister. <laughs> um, so we wanted to do a found footage film and we felt like, because uh, they have a lot of energy, Jesse has a lot of like an, a big on-screen presence. So we thought if he plays a paranormal investigator, that would really, uh, bring that energy to life um, yeah and we've always been interested in character driven pieces so we really wanted to do that and horror at the same time uh, yeah prior, yeah prior to, to it becoming a fan footage film we we just knew we wanted to do a genre film um, and then it was kind of like COVID was still going strong and then Omicron was I know this was, this was pre Omicron but anyway yeah it was just like it was just continuously things would open and they would close and they would open and they would close so it literally became a how do we do a film where the cast, where the crew is the cast uh, for the most part? And then we can keep it as small as possible. And then the school we filmed in, as no one's filmed in that before, that place has been shut down for about 12 years. And um, it's part of the Sacramento School District. And my wife was able to track down who, we just assumed no one had filmed there because they wouldn't let anyone. And it was actually, it was, it took a long time to find who to speak to. And the, um, 
we finally got through to them and they're like, I can't believe no one's ever asked us if we, they can film here before. I was like, there is like, it's so hard to find them. If you don't know a teacher within the right district to get through to the right people, um, it, it was basically, it was really difficult. But then as soon as we had the school, it was, we did a tour and then we were able to write the film based around the location. So it wasn't one of those ones where you, a lot of the time people will write a film and be like, have you had these big aspirations and ideas? And then as you produce it, it becomes less and less what you thought of based on the locations you have, but uh, that you were able to get, but we already had the location. So um, we were just, uh, we were lucky with that sense. And we, we, once we had that, I think we, we smashed out the outline pretty quickly. Cause I and think then, we had the, the, the stuff before the school, I think we already had plans. So we needed like a big location for the, the big haunt. And then we found the school. Was it called That's Lincoln? Right. Was it? No, so <laughs> it's called Marshall. That's actually really annoying. So we had to, um, it's the Marshall School and we kept asking them, like, can we use the name? Because there's a signage everywhere. And um, we're like, can we use the name? And like, we'll have to ask legal. And they just like, just took forever to get back to us. Cause it's, uh, I think it's city owned or state owned. And uh, we just decided, oh no, screw that. We'll just, um, we'll give it a different name. So we, we have our poor VFX guy, like any time that there is, you know, cause we're shooting handheld, right? Which isn't great for removing stuff. Uh, so he's had to like remove anything that said Marshall School, which it's it's seamless in the film, yeah. um, but I'm sure it wasn't a fun thing to do. So it would have been easier <laughs> to just be allowed to call it the Marshall School. And I think just from a Sacramento and a, just a awareness basis it probably would have been better in general to be called the marshall school but um yeah lincoln is what we came up with so does that why be, be, <clears throat> is the building that you guys used is that why you guys chose that location or were you looking for a building in that location we we actually had a we th we looked at the ride hotel in walnut grove for this initially um, and while they could promise us like a full floor, they couldn't promise us that there wouldn't be people there and noises. And um, it was, they were awesome. Like I, I actually felt bad kind of canceling on them, um, but we gave them plenty of notice. It was just, it was one of those things where film sets, if you have control, you have control. And we, we went with the school over the control. Um, I mean, my, we're gonna shoot a film at the right hotel at some point, that place is amazing for, for horror, especially. Um, but it was, it literally came down to just, again, it was COVID. We can contain our group within the grounds, lock the fences. No one can bother us. We have the building from this time to this time at night. Um, we ended up squeezing quite a few extra hours by becoming friends with the security guards, which was nice. Uh, so, cause they'd get excited about the film. So, um, tell us ghost stories, tell us ghost <laughs> stories. And then, uh, they'd be like, how long do you need? And we'd be able to kind of like push our time a little bit, which was really cool. So <laughs> before I ask anything about paranormal stuff, I'm curious, <clears throat> both of you handled cameras and, and did stuff on screen. <clears throat> I'm sorry, as part of the on screen cast as well. So I'm curious if that was something you guys chose last minute, or if you guys had chose to do that from jump. So initially, so the crew was going to be part of the cast, but Rob told me, um, yeah, you're just going to have a scene where you sign papers with Greg. And then every, every scene he was pointing the camera at me and I was like, what, the f what are you doing? <laughs> so I have to act in the moment. And it was interesting because um, a lot of the time, even though we knew where the scene was going to go, I didn't know what the actors were going to say. So a lot of the stuff, the lines I'm saying is improvised as well. Um, and I've never done that before. So it was quite a challenge trying to, direct and that's why co-directing was uh, a blessing uh because i remember there was one scene it was me and leah uh talking and then she asked me for notes afterwards i was like i have nothing to say because i was concentrating on myself and uh, rob was able to step in and give some good notes so yeah yeah so because uh, i was behind the camera so we, it was it was interesting it started as me as a joke me just pointing the camera at randy during the first takes because usually we don't use our first take that's kind of where everyone figures everything out and then we give our notes and we move forward <laughs> Um, but this Randy character started developing and Wes started really hating him. And it was like, okay, well, let's, let's push this further and see where it can go. And that's what's fun <laughs> with the improv thing. <laughs> yeah. It's what's fun with the improv thing. You can kind of do whatever you want. Um, as long as everyone gets to their own goals and it doesn't feel like there's, there's never a point in this film where it feels like someone is saying something for the sake of telling the audience of what is happening. And that's, that's the most important thing we found with our improv stuff that we've done. 
Okay, so then <laughs> did you guys, I mean, I think personally, this isn't a question, but I think it probably helps that it's found footage because yep. it, it, you know, it's like it fits. It doesn't need to be scripted or acted. Yeah. It, that's how it works. Um, I want to know about well, yeah, guys. I'll, I'm, sorry, just on that point. Yeah, no, with improv, ahead. like if it's with found footage, it's great because you're jump cutting through one camera. If it wasn't found footage, you could still do the improv, but you need at least two cameras right. because you're not going to capture the same moment twice otherwise. Um, and then that just brings in a whole wealth of other complications. Um, so, yeah, the found footage thing really, really helped us with this one for the freedom. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense, too. I, and I'm sure that helps a lot with budget, like having to have more cameras and more crew and just a light on top well, of the camera yeah, well yeah so so then let me let me ask you this then um how many hats did you guys have to wear behind the scenes as far as like lights and like doing producing and like doing everything because yeah you have the director's credit and that's what they reach out to me for right. but i know that you didn't just direct the movie so we co-directed co-produced co-wrote rob did the camera i edited it we both acted in it uh, other things like catering less glamorous things um yeah and it's, it's oh, good yeah, so um there's a smoke alarm going up in my house <laughs> okay you um, to put out a fire. if you need to put out a fire feel free to, okay. to take the five seconds <laughs> um yeah, with sounds like someone sorted it <laughs> okay good uh with producing uh it was good because me and Rob are opposite personalities and I think that works well. So certain producing things uh, he's better at and certain producing things I'm better at. So we complement each other's weaknesses, which I think works really well. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's like, um, I feel like, I think I take more of the logistics into play and then Randy's more on the, the legal and the um, kind of the paperwork, the just basically staying on to, we both, we don't clash. It's, it just, it just kind of everything happens as it happens um and we're two films in and yet to have a fight so that's cool <laughs> seems like a good collaboration rob yeah. does the fun stuff and i do the boring stuff but i'm fine with it i like doing the boring yeah. stuff i well, don't like me, the fun stuff <laughs> let me ask where your guys is uh creative spark for um um passion for supernatural uh stuff came from paranormal i guess i should say yeah, I, I've just always loved horror films. Um, I think, like, as a kid, my, my mom's always liked horror movies. My dad didn't. My brother didn't. So, like, my mom would take me to see horror films, which was really cool. Like, um, being the kid at school who'd seen the in Australia MA-rated film that the other kids weren't allowed to see. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I think... I, it, I've always wanted to, to do horror. Horror is just a fun genre. And also the, the, the horror crowd is just so supportive. It's kind of like, um, I come from a like music video background with like metal and hardcore and punk and that. And the crowds are very similar. Like the, even as the whole internet thing came along, people are still buying horror movies. People are still buying metal music, right? Like there's genres that haven't been affected by piracy so heavily. And I just think it's always been fun to know because that, that tells you something about the people who are invested in it as a like an audience. And um, I don't know, the, the supernatural element, I didn't think I was going to make a ghost film before I made a slasher, to be honest. Um, because I've always enjoyed like the gore element of things. And this is, I don't think there's any blood in this film at all. Uh, it was all about oh, tension God. and atmosphere. Yeah. So it's, um, wait for the next one that we just wrapped though. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, it just came from a love of the films. Um, I'm not, I, me and Randy don't watch those Paranormal Hunter shows. We don't go ghost hunting. Um, it's, I it's funny because, watch. like, yeah. uh, growing up, there was a show called Most Wanted in the UK where they did, like, ghost hunting, and I used to find it entertaining. I used to really, really like it. More for the, the comedy aspect, because um, the, the main guy was quite an eccentric. So uh, I liked it for that reason. But, yeah, I've always yeah. wanted to do a horror film as well. Uh, and and, and with them, there's Austin, who's our sound guy, and he's, like, we're, we're like, Wolfcat Films as our production company. He's the third guy. Um, he used to work on those doing sound for those. So he knew all the tricks and, and what they do. Uh, so that actually really helped with this film, especially like setting off the EMF and just, just certain, certain uh, words, certain things that just really, really helped kind of sell the, the, con the concept that we were going for. Nice. So how did you, <clears throat> did you know from 
<clears throat> jump that you were going to have to balance out the relationship between this brother and sister uh, versus everything else that's happening? Um, or is that something, like you said, they have such great chemistry. Is this something that, that built up more from something small based on them being on set and working together? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's because the thing about when you watch it a lot of that builds up before they're on the same scene together yeah i mean we there's a lot that we shot that isn't in the film um i mean our rough cut was about three hours like the but including a whole thing that led to some other stuff but it was just i think we i don't know how to answer this because they we we really, we basically said, this is what happened in the past. It's going to come up at some point. Um, in between that, we just need to see you guys, like that, that uh, Izzy, you're trying to make amends, Wes, you're not interested, right? Yeah. And then, and but we also need to see that you care for Izzy, right? Which is a lot to ask for an actor without giving them lines. Um, and so we just, we just knew, I'm trying not to give away too much because there's like reveals that happen right. like three quarters of the way through the film. Um, but yeah, it was really just about making sure that the audience was aware of that. And that's kind of like, you see that interview with Izzy when we first meet her. Um, she says, I don't want to talk about it, but we give you just enough uh, to kind of be like, okay, well, her and Wes are very different personalities. Um, let's go from there. When it came to the, the chalkboard, I don't think that this is necessarily a spoiler, <laughs> but when it came to the chalkboard, I thought it was interesting that the... Uh, I think the character's name was Jeff. He had mentioned the something about time. You know what I mean? Um, was there anything like how did you guys end up choosing what to put on the chalkboard? Did everybody just kind of get? We didn't put anything. That was all there. Yeah. Oh, really? The only thing that was put on there was when uh, Greg wrote on the on the board. That's the only thing we added. It's probably still there. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the art department was done for us. It was great. Yeah, there was, there was some stuff that we chose not to film because it was obviously like stupid modern right. silly things i think there was like a yeah there's some stuff on there that just we wouldn't shoot at but uh yeah we didn't write anything was it jesse says something like keep that name in yeah it looks like hannah or uh... yeah hannah i don't think it means anything but yeah, we'll no, keep that name like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so uh with the um the other movie that you have coming up you guys are you able to talk about it at all i know you said it's going to be bloody and it's going to be a little different than this. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to find. <laughs> we can. I can say that it's a uh, Christmas horror anthology. Oh, nice. I think that's anthology. that's about as much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was again. We were kind of. It was a, another thing to do with COVID, right? Like it was just. It was going to be easier. It ended up being a lot harder, just from a time and stress place, because obviously the amount of locations and actors you need, but. Um, it was, it made it easier to be able to have lots of small shoots instead of like one big shoot, just, just with everything going on. So um, I think for now we have to keep that one under wraps, but we're, we have, we're happy to talk about it being a Christmas horror because if we love Christmas horror, there's not enough of them. <laughs> um, so that's the, yeah, that's, that's what we've been working on next. Well, since you can't talk about it too much, as far as infrared goes, um, did the did is there anything that people haven't asked you that you would like to share about the the movie mm. like things that you feel like maybe people haven't noticed or or anything that that you feel that you haven't really expressed just because people ask you the same thing over and over again like when did you film this what was your inspiration da, 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 da. Yeah, I think the something that people aren't aware of, which will be on the Blu-ray, um, that opening like three minute scene, the That's little exactly what I was gonna say. Start, yeah, uh, we actually shot an entire episode of the TV show Infrared that's within the movie. Um, and originally that started the film, but like then it was just like, there's, as, as cool as it is and as happy as we are with it, it doesn't add anything to the actual film. Um, so, but we did need to see that he did an exorcism for that story beat later on. So, um, I was gonna, I was gonna say that, but you did it without spoiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it was, 
there is a like 22 minute or whatever episode, uh, which is basically that entire thing. Um, and there's some very, very good Wes interactions. Like Ian, who plays the boyfriend in that scene, who barely has a line now in the cut, he's like the star of that yeah. episode. And we're, we're very happy that we get to put that out. And then also like, there's a whole backstory as to why everything's happening there. So yeah, no one's really aware that that's available. So that's kind of like a little extra piece that we've got, um, which we're happy to, we're looking forward to see what people think of it because it does play probably more comedically than right. infrared, which so tonally there's some shifts in there. It's yeah. funny because um, originally, because in the final product, uh, Wes looks very competent and knows what he's doing, but in that episode, we say up to where he looked like an idiot, mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was hard to cut it out, but it served the the final film very well. So, did you say you guys will be releasing that with um, with the movie or like any kind of? Yeah, so I think DVD? we're we're putting together the um, the physical media aspect of it right now, which again works good because horror horror people still buy physical yeah. media like we have we haven't done blue i haven't done blu-rays for my last two films and we didn't do one for the one that we did um so it's going to be fun to actually have something like in our hands um and yeah so that that'll be on there for a while i'm sure it'll make its way online at some point but um for now that's just kind of like an extra piece so uh yeah excited to share that i really like that there was a lot of uh language like a lot of fuck this and that um <laughs> throughout the yeah you know, throughout the uh, movie just because it isn't acting you know and from a movie standpoint it isn't acting it should just be natural um was that inserted that way because of that or was it just it's because just, you guys are comfortable jesse <laughs> just swears a lot in general so i think it works <laughs> the film we did before the other girl which was improv as well if you if you want some uh, some swearing you should watch that <laughs> that's some serious swearing there um, so before I let you go, uh, we already talked about your other film. Anything else that you guys would like to plug? Uh, Want to give you a short platform just to be able to do that? Whether it be um, social media or anything you want uh, fans to check out? No, I just think, uh, I mean, I, I want to plug Infrared, to be honest, um, yeah. which is why we're here, which is great. The Just, uh, yeah, share the trailer, please. Uh, we're so grateful. Like, we're working with Terror Films on distribution with this, and they've just been so amazing. And um we're so happy to be working like with with a distributor who just like they're present and it's so it's so great and um we we're so happy for them to be putting this film out so like it will be on the uh terror films uh channel um from the 20 27th wait hold on, 29th 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 yeah, okay. I should probably get that date right before whatever. Um, but yeah, Randy, look that up while I spill this next bit. The, uh, so yeah, we'll be, sorry, we've got dates for so many things no, going on at the moment. Um, okay. But yeah, so I think at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard. Yeah, so on the 29th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, there'll be a stream of it with a live filmmaker Q&A kind of in the chat on their uh, YouTube channel on Terra. So um, all that information is like stuff that's out there and so yeah we're, we're, we're looking forward to that because um i don't think i've ever watched a film and live chatted before so uh that'll be a, a fun experience especially yeah. being from the, the other side of things yeah yeah welcome to the new world <laughs> <laughs> um anything last from you randy or are you guys i think awesome? rob pretty much sold it just uh yeah i want to thank terror films and just the cast and crew they've been amazing so yeah yeah well, thank you guys both so much. Uh, make sure you guys keep doing what you're doing and make sure you guys stay safe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.